Hey, it's John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and it's The Entrepreneurial You, the show for dedicated and passionate Caribbean entrepreneurs seeking daily inspiration, brought to you by author, speaker, and award-winning entrepreneur, Henneke Watkins-Porter. You must be prepared to ignite. So by choosing the micro niche and picking an item that you create tons of different products for that particular product and service that you're selling, the next step is building a brand around this. So Exit drives you building traffic, which is great, but you don't want to just solely depend on that traffic. What you want to do is you want to build a brand around your Exit store. So not only do you need to use Exit as a platform to drive organic traffic by optimizing your listings for SEO and making sure you have great photos, making sure that you have great SEO done correctly making sure that you're optimizing your whole entire store for SEO. What I mean by that is making sure that you're using tags on your title, you're using tags on your listing description, you're using all 13 tags on the bottom of your listing, and also making sure that your sections are tags that you want to rank for and that your tagline on your store is another tag that you want to rank for. That is optimizing your store for SEO. Hi, this is Henneko. I'm so glad you took the time to stop by today. In Jamaican parlance, walk one. Me glad to say a dial. This episode is sponsored by HennekeWatkinsPorter.com as well as the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Now on HennekeWatkinsPorter.com, you can visit us for blogs, resources, books, online podcast courses, podcasts, and more. If you are new to the Entrepreneur New Podcast, be sure to check out past episodes with guests such as John Lee Dumas, Patrice Washington, Seth Godin, Richard Branson, Amy Porterfield, and a host of other game changers. We needed to raise capital, but our experience with local financial institutions was that they were cautious and slow to act, and interest rates were far too high. We had real concerns about financing our business through outside equity investors, and the possibility of interference. Could we get a fair valuation for our business? We had our own ideas about the business and its value. Should I go the traditional route of bank financing or should I try the Jamaica Stock Exchange? So we made a call and experienced transformation of our business through conversations. I'm John Mafood, CEO of Jamaican Teas and we're listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Give us a call today at 876-967-3271 to begin your transformation through conversation. We want to see your company listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. And now, here's today's episode. Creativity is contagious. Pass it on. Albert Einstein. Greetings. Hello, my peak performer. What a guan. It is episode 186 of the Entrepreneurial You podcast. I'm Henico Watkiss Porter. Today's episode is with Nancy Badijo. Nancy is a digital marketing specialist for women entrepreneurs and Etsy sellers. She works with Etsy sellers who want to build a thriving Etsy business and embrace the entrepreneurial adventure. She's been a digital marketing specialist now for 11 years and an Etsy seller for the last four years. She started her Etsy shop in late 2016 because she wanted to write a case study for her blog about making handmade items and selling them on Etsy. Now she has six Etsy shops and loves making passive income with Etsy. I'm excited that we're about to have a conversation on how to make money selling digital products on Etsy. Welcome, welcome, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Absolutely. Now, before we dive in, what do you know about Jamaica? I know that it's near Puerto Rico. (laughs) (laughs) I know that the people are beautiful. I like um, jerk patties a lot. Uh, Jamaican patties. We we have um Puerto Rican parade in Chicago every year, and that's one of the they have a Jamaican station. It's like the only time I could eat them um yearly, so I, I'll usually get one of those. And I actually never been to Jamaica, but it's in my bucket list to go. Ah, sounds good. Sounds good. You should come <laughs> definitely. <laughs> now, Nancy, let's talk about your journey um to the online space. How did it start for you? 
it, well, you know, I don't have like the normal success story like other people have, you know, they within two years to build a, a lot of money um, online. Mine was a little bit different um, in 2007 when the the economy crashed. Um, I lost my home. Um, I was a first time home buyer. I was working at a job that I got laid off as well. And I heard about people making money online, but really didn't know anyone at that moment. Um, so I started researching online on how to make money online. And that's kind of how my, my journey started in 2009. And I started learning, you know, how to create a blog, how to flip the blog and sell it, how to do affiliate marketing, how to use social media um, to leverage traffic to anywhere that you want, whether it's your email list, products and services. And that's kind of how I started. Um, in the first couple of years, to be quite honest, I had a full time job. Well, I had a full time job in a hustle for 11 years, to be quite honest. But the first few years, I didn't make any money. It was all trial and error, trial and error. I would do this. I would make, you know, a couple hundred grand, a hundred grand, but not enough to quit my full time job. And it was just a learning curve for me to learn um, about digital marketing in general. Uh, and then um, I started making money like four years in with affiliate marketing. And that actually was really good for me. And I still make money through affiliate marketing. And in 2015, I got married and someone told me, well, you should check out Etsy for, you know, wedding stuff. And I went on Etsy and I bought like a whole bunch of like do it yourself, like wedding sign, table numbers, um, sitting chart. And I was like, huh, this person just made, you know, about sixty five dollars from me, but I'm the one that's going to edit the information. I'm the one that's going to take it to Kinko's to get it printed out. And that's kind of how my journey started with Exe as well. It just, because I was already a digital marketer by nature, I was already intrigued by how people were making money on Exe. So then I did a, a case study and I ended up doing really well my first year on Exe. Um, I made a little bit over 21,000. Um, and that's kind of how everything started. But originally it started by losing my home, losing my job. And I was just searching online how to make money online. And I just got intrigued by it. And I just kept you doing that or learning how to do it, even though I wasn't making any money. And I had a full time job at that moment. I got another job. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's your journey into Etsy. Before we go into that platform, Nancy, I want to get from you um, affiliate marketing because that was a win for you. Right. You discovered that. Tell me a little bit about that and how it worked. Of course. Um, what I started learning was um, with affiliate marketing, um, it was like, it's, I'm not going to say it's the least amount of work, but it is pretty easy to kind of get started because you're not necessarily building a brand. The brand is already built. You're just promoting the products and services. So what I started learning to do was I would create a blog where I would talk a, about a specific niche. So if I wanted to do a blog about health, I would just post, I'd create articles that were all about health, health, like how to lose weight, um, how to stay in shape, stuff like that. Anything relevant when it came to healthy, healthy eating, et cetera. And then what you would do is you sign up for an affiliate company. Um, the one that I currently use that I've been using for the last like eight years is called ClickBank. And what I like about them compared to other affiliate companies is that their payout is really high. So you can make anywhere from 60 to 90 percent payout, some even 100 percent. And that's because um, they actually do a lot of up sales from the back end. So they don't lose money by paying you more. And basically how I do affiliate marketing is that I create a blog article, a blog. I create a niche around whatever I'm going to promote. And then I just promote related items. And um, I usually do like um, linking. So I will create an article, put the link in there if somebody clicks goes to the person's website, which is like a sales landing page. Um, if they buy, I make commission. Um, so I'm like the middleman. I don't have to ship anything out. Um, and if you build it that way with the blog, to me, it's a lot easier. Some people do affiliate marketing just through Pinterest or just promoting it in their social media. But that's getting a little bit harder because now even fe um, Facebook doesn't allow um, affiliate links anymore. So it is getting a little bit tougher. So the easier way is to build a blog where you write content around whatever you want to promote and then drive traffic to the blog. And from the blog, you drive traffic 
to the actual product and service. Absolutely. I'm sure it's really fantastic. And so let's get back to Etsy. Now, for those who are not quite aware, tell us a little bit about that platform. Oh, of course. So Etsy is very different from other platforms like Amazon or um, Shopify. Etsy is a platform where um, if you are a crafter and you create things, you could sell on Etsy. So everything that you that you buy on Etsy is custom made or is handmade by an Etsy seller. So everything is unique. Um, you could personalize a lot of items, which is really neat as well. Um, you could buy, and you could also sell vintage as well. So they let you allow you to sell vintage that's 20 years and older, and then also just handmade items, so products and services. And you could pretty much sell anything from um, top bags to t-shirts, to mugs, to digital prints, um, to anything that you have created, you could upload on Etsy and sell. Awesome sauce. Now I want you to take us, Nancy, through the journey of creating your product creating that account and listing the products on Etsy for those who are now beginning to get intrigued by, you know, Oh, I can sell my products here to take us through that journey. I think the first step is thinking to yourself, okay, do I have a personal connection to the product that I want to sell or can I develop a passion? Right? Because I didn't have a passion for Etsy. I just developed it. And now it's just, I love Etsy. Right? So you don't necessarily have to have a passion for it, but can you maybe develop a passion for it? If you do enjoy it and you could develop a passion for it, the next step is, is this something that people are searching for on Etsy? It's a heavily search. Um, and you could do market research. You could use, um, you could go to Etsy.com and just type in whatever your idea is and kind of see how many other stores are selling that. Check out their reviews, check out their sales, um, check out, When did they open their store? They open their store one to two years and they're making money on the idea that you have. That tells you that's pretty profitable. Um, You don't want to look at a store that's 10 years old. You want to look at a store that is fairly new. Um, Also, you could use a tool called erank.com. And this tool, um, you can only use it if you are already have an Etsy store open. But the benefit of using erank.com is that you could do market research in there and it tells you the top sellers by country, by categories. So this will actually really help you dive in and see what are the top sellers look like. It's a lot easier than you doing the market research yourself. Um, But either way works. And once you find a niche that you're somewhat have a personal connection or you're passionate about that people are searching for on Etsy, and on top of that, people are making money on Etsy, right? Because that's the ultimate goal that you make money as well. Once you do that, then what you want to do is you want to micro niche, which means that you want to just sell a a particular product. You don't want to sell a variety of different products because when you start too broad, it becomes a lot harder for you to identify your target audience. Plus, it becomes a lot harder for you to become an industry leader in that particular niche. So you want to dominate on that particular niche. And once you dominate and you build a brand with that particular niche, that's when you could create a robust line of other products based on what your audience is asking you to add. Because you'll start getting feedback. Hey, you should add these type of products or it will be great if you had this. And you'll start seeing um, many people asking for the same thing. And that's the products that eventually you will start adding to your store to kind of scale it to the next level and add additional products. But you don't want to start too broad. Um, you could test it out, but eventually you're going to have to micro niche. And this is going to help you also when you micro niche. One, um, become an industry leader in your niche. Two, stand out in a saturated market. Um, and three, dominate Um, social media, branding, and also dominate the search results. Right. You've kind of touched on it already in terms of some of the products, but I just want to get a little deeper, Nancy, based on your experience, Mm -hmm. what products do you think are ideal for Etsy? For Etsy, anything like weddings, party events, anything that like t-shirts are really popular on Etsy. What I've seen also very popular right now because of the pandemic, um, obviously masks are selling a lot. Digital products like things like Cards that you send out to people, digital cards are selling a lot. I've seen stores that are making a lot of money with just digital cards, which is crazy to think. But I think the way that with the pandemic and everything that's happening, 
digital products are like really growing on Etsy right now, especially because a lot of people that did print on demand, which means that you buy the product in a company, like a third party company ships out the packages. Even those companies are having difficulties shipping stuff out. So now everyone's thinking, okay, I can't do print on demand at the moment until everything gets back to as normal as it's ever going to be. So digital products are the way to go, whether you're doing cards, whether you're doing wedding invites or party invites, whether you're doing um, anything that they could download, like home decor, all of those are trending right now, like crazy on Xing. Wow. And in terms of, I think you had also mentioned this, but in terms of the number of products that you want to get on your store, um, how many products are ideal to get the most, um, you know, wallet share from customers? I always say, you know, there's not like a, a magic number of how many products to add, but I do say to have at least 10 to 20 products because you don't want um, a potential buyer when they start engaging with your store for, for you to have only two listings. So 10 to 20 is ideal. And then every month, try to add consistent. The good thing about digital products is a lot easier to add digital products on a consistent basis than when you're selling like t-shirts or something else that's a tangible item. But 10 to 20 is a good number to start. Mm -hmm. Because you had mentioned like to, to not have too many items. So you're talking variation of the same item. Is that it? Exactly. So if your niche is, let's say you're going to sell um, nursery prints, then you should have 10 to 20 different types of nursery prints. And you could create tons of those, but you want a micro niche on nursery prints and then create as many as you like. Awesome sauce. Now mm -hmm. let's talk about a little more technical details of your store in terms of marketing, traffic and analytics. Um, take us through those. Of course. So the reason why I started with you know, choosing something that you're passionate and then building a brand around it is because ultimately that's going to help you market yourself the right way. So by choosing the micro niche and picking an item that you create tons of different products for that particular product and service that you're selling, the next step is building a brand around this. So XE drives you building traffic, which is great, but you don't want to just solely depend on that traffic. What you want to do is you want to build a brand around your XE store. So not only do you need to use XE as a platform to drive organic traffic by optimizing your listings for SEO and making sure you have great photos, making sure that you have um, great SEO done correctly, making sure that you're optimizing your whole entire store for SEO. What I mean by that is making sure that you're using tags on your title, you're using tags on your listing description, you're using all 13 tags on the bottom of your listing, and also making sure that your sections are tags that you want to rank for and that your tagline on your store is another tag that you want to rank for, that is optimizing your store for SEO. So that's one way of driving organic traffic, not only from Etsy, but from Google as well. Addition to that, you want to build a brand, meaning um, you don't want to just depend on Etsy because as, as Etsy gets very saturated right now, it's, very, it's becoming very saturated now because a lot of people are learning how easy it is to get, a, get started on Etsy. And it has the building traffic. So as more stores open, it means that you'll most likely get less traffic and more competition. So how do you stand your how do you stand out from everyone else that's selling maybe similar items like yourself? And that is building a brand and becoming an industry leader in that specific niche. So what you want to do ultimately is have a Facebook fan page, have a Facebook group as well, um, have a YouTube channel in the future if you want to. Um, consider doing that is really important and will drive tons of traffic to your business and build brand awareness. Ultimately, have Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. I recommend to every XC seller to have like the major platforms and using that to leverage traffic back to your store. Um, another important thing is email marketing. As a business owner, as soon as you open your XC store, having an email list already put together offering some type of value for an exchange of an email. I always tell people never say, use this coupon code to get 20%. Tell them, join my email list and then you get the 20%. That way you can start building your email list that you could remarket your products to them at a later time and you could cross promote your other platforms. Like you could say, hey, here's your 20% discount. And by the way, 
we are on Instagram, follow us here, or we are on Pinterest, follow us here. That's how I've been able to grow my Etsy stores, like brand around it. And it's by cross promoting and using email marketing as well. So ultimately you want to shift your mindset and not think of Etsy as a hobby, but think of it as a career. And when you look at big corporations, what did they do? They brand themselves correctly. And that's how they stand out from the competition because majority of XC sellers are not willing to do the extra work. But if you do it, you could win even in a saturated market. But that's ultimately the goal is just micro niching and kind of building your brand around it and then using social media platforms, email marketing to build a memorable brand. Sounds Exactly. Um, like something that, you know, those who are listening who want to start a digital business would want to hear. Now, in terms of the analytics part of it, I know we talked about the, the building of the traffic and marketing and so on. In terms of the analytics, how do you know how the store is doing? Get details in terms of the traffic on the store and so on. How does that happen? You could do several things. The first one is making sure that you are reviewing your XE stats. So XE stats gives you all the information of where your traffic is coming from, like social media will show you like how many people are coming from social, how many people are coming from um, other sources. And they'll tell you the other sources. They'll tell you um, how many people found you on XE, how many people found you on Google. So paying attention to that. And I would say when you first open a store, you won't have that much data. But after 30 days, you'll collect enough data and not just from um, XE. You'll collect enough data from Pinterest, from um, Instagram, if you have set it up, from Facebook, and you can start cross analyzing all your data. And that will help you build somewhat of your target persona. When you first originally open your store, you know, you might have an idea of, okay, I'm doing nursery print. So my target audience is a first time mom or moms that want to decorate their home decor. So you kind of have an idea already. But once you have that data, then you really have an idea because it'll tell you um, certain information. Now, what I recommend is not just looking at your XE stats, but also connecting Google Analytics to your XE store. Many XE sellers don't know that they could actually do that. You can actually connect your store. It's a very simple process to do. It literally will take you like three minutes to do. But the cool thing about that is that Google Analytics gives you so much insight from the age you know, how old is the person that's like shopping on your store? It'll tell you the busiest times of your store. Um, It So, and that's important because if your busiest times are between two and four, um, one of the marketing strategies that you could do is always put new listings on those, on those times, because that's when your store is the busiest. So people could, could see those alerts when they come in, they could see those listings as they're shopping on your store. There's so much metric on Google Analytics. You could pinpoint directly to the pin from Pinterest that drove you the most traffic versus on XE stats. It gives you like a general idea, which is pretty good, but doesn't nail it down to, okay, this is the pin that I did on Pinterest that drove that 1400, you know, views this day. Like it pinpoint everything to you. So connecting Google Analytics is one of the most important things you have to do. And then measuring the data on a regular basis. In the beginning, it might feel a little bit overwhelming because there's so much information. But the more you use it and the more you get used to it, the more you'll be able to go in there and break it down and know exactly who is your audience, where they're coming from, what platform is helping you drive more traffic so you could do a little bit more focus on that one versus overwhelming yourself with so many. Sounds well. sounds really, really good. Um, I know mm-hmm. Google Analytics analytics is the boss really you know <laughs> yeah exactly yes exactly. and nancy so i'm gonna ask you um as we wrap you know or if you, for your final thoughts in terms of what it is that you want my community to know about etsy that we haven't yet spoken about well what i want to tell everyone about etsy is that it's a a great platform it's a great platform for anyone out there that sells unique products and services because no one there's no other site like that online And it's a great platform that you could build a thriving business. There's a lot of stores that are killing on Etsy to the point that they make six figures a year or even more than that. Um, The only thing you need to do is just put a little bit of work behind your store 
And that's all you need to do. Etsy right now is growing. Um, the second quarter, they did really, really well. So it is a great platform. And another thing is, it's a great platform for anyone out there that want to start business, but they're a little intimidated or they don't want to spend too much money. It's so low cost effective to start on Etsy. Um, that is so cheap compared to creating your own website or doing another site like Shopify, they charge more. So it's very cost effective to get started, very easy to use. In addition to that, if anyone out there is like, okay, I'm getting overwhelmed with how to get started, Exe provides amazing resources. There's a resource that they provide, it's called the Exe Seller's Handbook. And it's almost like the Bible of Exe, basically. And you go in there and any question you have, whether it's SEO or how to list your photos or what size your photos should be or what should be included in your listing description or how to engage your brand or how to grow your brand or how to get customers to engage with your brand, excuse me, it has all that detail in there. It's a lot to read, but that should be enough to kind of even get you started if you're in a very um, low budget that you can't afford a course or additional resources at the moment. Oh, sounds excellent. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent information. I have been talking with Nancy Badijo. Nancy, I'm going to now give you an opportunity to share your freebie that you have for our community, as well as how my people get in touch with you. Oh, of course. So what I'm going to be giving as a free uh, freebie is how to optimize your store for SEO. And I believe that is the number one thing that many people struggle with that I highly recommend um, downloading. And it's going to be a free PDF. And it's going to show you step by step how to optimize your whole entire store. And how people could reach out to me is, I think the easiest way is on my blog at nancybadijo.com. Um, yeah, I'll have all my information in there as well as my contact information. So if you have any questions um, that you would like to ask me, you can always reach out to me. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nancy. I learned a lot as well. So I know that my community is going to you know, be loving this episode. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you, my peak performer, for tuning in to this episode with Nancy Badijo. I certainly look forward to connecting with you next week. In the meantime, connect with me for all things podcasting, books, coaching, online courses, etc. by visiting henniferwatkinscourse.com and sending me a WhatsApp on um, from the homepage. So when you go to the homepage, there's a WhatsApp icon. Just send me a message. It comes directly to my phone. And I'll be happy to get back to you. Here is the point of hope for this week. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Romans 12 verse 12. What good 